What is going on guys? It's the Mare Dragon. So the Autumn Internationals are just around the corner. We are just a couple of days away. So we've got to do some preview videos because we've had some teams announced. So I thought I'd start off with the Scotland versus Australia game. Now I know Japan, New Zealand's coming out as well. I might do a video for that. I'm struggling to find any way I can actually watch this game in the UK. So maybe we'll get around to that after this one. But Scotland, Australia is one of the games I'm really looking forward to over this Autumn Internationals. Both teams are quite hard to work out where they're at right now we're only a year away from the world cup and this is going to be the sort of games i want to be seeing teams improving now having a quick look before starting this video i did check out the record so far in the year for both teams and they're sort of on a bit of a level playing field at the minute scotland won three lost five australia have won three and lost six now that's for the 2022 year there are a couple of extra bits here that i haven't included like scotland a beat chile and uh, I think Australia A lost to Japan 15 or something. They're not quite the starting teams. There's a lot of experimental players and their new caps and stuff. I haven't quite included them in this. This is sort of the, the mainline games that you see going on. So both teams sort of on like a about a 30% win rate compared to all their games. Um which isn't great, to be fair. And both teams are struggling in quite similar areas. Discipline has let both teams down across their game so far. They've played this year. So getting to see both of them play each other will, of course, be very, very entertaining. So so let's check out the teams that have been announced to start off in this game. Starting off with Scotland. They're the home team. Why not? We mixed over a bit. I feel like I haven't spoken about Scotland for a while. So starting out of this front row, Pierre Schumann, Dave Cherry, and Xander Fagerson. That's a good starting front row. They're obviously not thinking they're going to warm up into these games. They want to get straight off into these Ultimate Internationals potentially with a win. That's a strong front row. I'm liking what I'm seeing there. Sam Skinner and Grant Gilchrist will be filling out in that lock department, both which playing quite well. Actually, a lot of people spoke about in the Six Nations how much work Grant Gilchrist was doing, but just sort of quietly doing it in the background. I had to agree, when you just stop and look at him, he's playing really well, actually. So hopefully he has a good Ultimate Internationals. And then in this back row, Jamie Ritchie, Hamish Watson, and Matt Fagerson. Now, no Rory Darge named in this side, who I thought had a really good Six Nations going on but you know this is still an incredibly strong back row for scotland jamie rich taking over as captain uh will be fun to see how he gets on there his own discipline can sometimes have him down sometimes you want to lead from the front going on here so hopefully he does okay but hamish watson and matt vegas in there to back you up i think one to eight this is pretty solid to be fair this is a pretty good scotland team but we sort of said this through the six nations we said this through these july internationals as well that although they're not necessarily playing like the starting scotland team that i would want maybe the the best scotland team they can do across this one to 15 um, they're still a good Scotland team, but it didn't really pan out that way versus Argentina in the summer. So we'll see how they get on. In the halfback partnership, Blair Kinghorn gets the nod at 10 and Ali Price retaining in the scrum half position. Now, there was a lot of talk about Blair Kinghorn. I thought in the summer he improved for me. Personally, just watching him, not necessarily knowing about his position at 10 that much. I sort of see him more as a winger or a fullback, but a lot of people were impressed. Some people were not impressed by him at 10. I personally thought he got better as the tournament got on, especially in that second game. I thought he did very well playing in that number 10 position no Finn Russell that was one of the big talking points about the Scotland team that got a named but I would like to see how Blair Kinghorn gets on I feel like Australia could be in his face quite a lot put a lot of pressure on him you might be able to see him uh, take a few knocks here though I do think Blair Kinghorn's very good when he's got time on the ball uh, but sometimes the pressure does get to him if players are rushing at him quick so we'll see how he gets on in the centre partnership, then, we have Sione Tui Pilotu and Mark Bennett. Now, Mark Bennett's been playing well recently. He's really got into that uh, outside centre shirt now for Scotland quite a few times, ahead of people like, you know, Chris Harris. I mean, you know, the Red Path got named to be in the Scotland team as well. So a couple of people these lads have beaten into here. I think this is quite a nice setup. I do actually quite like this uh, Tui Pilotu and Bennett setup. I think it's quite an attacking show going on in terms of the centre partnership. So nice to see that. They're going to take this game to Australia. It's hopefully not going to be a bit of a three-point kicking game. I'd like to see both teams really get into this one. So nice to see there. And then finally in this back three, Duhan, Van der Merwe, Darcy Graham, and Ollie Smith coming in in the fullback shirt. Now, when we went on to do the Summer Internationals, one thing that I did say was I didn't think it was necessarily the strongest Scotland team, but it's still a good Scotland team. We were missing people like Hogg. We were missing people like Finn Russell. Um, and I, they've sort of done it again here. And it didn't really go the way of Scotland during those Summer Internationals. If you remember those games against Argentina, uh, coming away with two losses, considering their win in the second game was 
really, really good. And they look really confident in that. So they'll want to move back towards that game, I think, as their target game. But I see Ollie Smith getting a shout here at, uh, in the fullback position. So hopefully he can have a good game. So overall, 1-15 to 15 looking really good. In terms of the replacements then, George Turner, Jamie Batty and WP Nell. Now, they're not really struggling in this front row at all, really, in terms of some big names, big caps coming in. Uh, front row replacements looking good here. Now, the rest of this bench is where it begins to potentially fade out a bit here for me. Glenn Young and Jack Dempsey getting the shout here as well as George Horn, Ross Thompson and Damien Hoyland. Now, this is not an enormously high capped bench for me. Uh, and a game like Australia, we saw it in the Rugby Championship. Teams putting on a good starting 15 and then adding some new boys in on the bench. And it just sort of fizzles out in that second half. Some of them didn't get the chance. Uh, we actually saw Australia having to resort to this a couple of times. So... Uh, hopefully these lads will hold out. There's a couple of big names in here. Looking forward to see George Horn get back on the field. Um, they have experimented a lot in terms of different replacements there. So hopefully he can have a good game. And Ross Thompson, another one who I'm looking forward to see a bit more from when we get to see him in this Scotland jersey. So hopefully it's going to be a really good game. On to Australia then. And the Wallabies had a bit of a tough time over the Rugby Championship. Uh, coming away with sort of one win, one loss against every team except for New Zealand. Um, now, uh, there was some games there that looked really good. There were some games where their own discipline just let them down in some games. Some games you really thought they had a great opportunity to win it. And they just sort of threw it away. A couple of games they just got outmatched. They are suffering with a lot of their own injuries as well through that championship. So, uh, to be honest, they've managed to put together a really good team considering some of the players that are missing in their uh, lineup. So, we'll have a little bit of a look through. James Slipper, David Parecki, and Alan Alatoa coming in in this front row. Now, uh, we all saw the image of Alan Alatoa uh, having his little face-off with uh, Evan Etzebeth in, <laughs> in their game versus South Africa. Fierce-looking dude. Um, but I think this is a good front row. They did do quite well in terms of some of their scrummaging. It was just some of the bigger teams where you saw that scrum beginning to fade away for them on occasion. So they'll want to hold out. One of the areas I'll be very, very interested in is going to be this lock department. Nick Frost and Kadarin Neville, we saw both of them quite a few times um, throughout the rugby championship but line out situations is one of the things that I actually think Scotland do quite okay they've got a good number of locks who are actually quite good they do get out beaten sometimes when you see them play teams like Ireland tend to do pretty well in terms of the line out but I do think Scotland have the opportunity to have a good line out um, considering the number of people that are missing from the lock department in Australia at the minute um, I think they did okay in terms of the lineups for the rugby championship. I don't remember the stats. People will probably disagree with me down in the comments. Feel free to drop down if I'm just completely wrong. I'm normally completely wrong about something as we go through, but I, don't, I remember them being pretty okay in terms of the lineups, to be fair. In the back row, then, Jed Holloway moves into that six shirt. Michael Hooper comes back in in the seven shirt. And then finally, Rob Valentini in that eight shirt. Michael Hooper coming back in, of course, missing out on that rugby championship. Took himself out just before that first game. Um, we saw a couple of new people coming for me people like uh, Fraser McWright coming in there as well filling in in that seven shirt so um, I think this is still a really good back row they're going to be coming in they're going to come in hard we know what Michael Hooper up is Rob Valentini had a really good rugby championship he was absolutely smashing through players anyone involved with the fantasy will know he uh, did score pretty well throughout most of those games uh, so one to eight also looking pretty solid for Australia, really looking forward to see how some of these forwards match up against each other. In the halfback partnership, Tate McDermott gets the nod ahead of Nick White with Bernard Foley coming in at 10. Uh, Bernard Foley will be looking to make sure he doesn't have any uh, time penalties for holding on to the ball for too long. Uh, but overall, when we did get to see him in that rugby championship, um, I did think he actually played very well when he had that uh, the number 10 shirt. So good luck to him. In the centre partnership, Hunter Paisami and Len Ikatao. We saw these partnerships sort of moving around a little bit throughout the rugby championship. Len Ikitao played very well, actually, throughout most of the games. Uh, again, another one, if you were involved with the fantasy, you will know he scored some big points. I think he might have been one of the highest scoring centres throughout that fantasy. So really good to see him back in this team as well. And then finally, in that back three, the, they've really mixed up these wingers an awful lot. A lot of injuries going on. Tom Wright moves to the left wing. Andrew Kellaway onto the right wing. And Tom Banks in that fullback position. Now, there's a lot of these players that can all interchange and move around a little bit. So there's a lot of malleability in in this team so it's nice to see uh no Corey Abetti which uh, is a shame for me who made a bunch of thumbnails and spent a long time doing them and uh, have now got Corey Abetti in the thumbnail he's not even playing wonderful uh so that's gonna mess that up a bit but in terms of 1 to 15 uh this is a good looking Australia team um I think they could do quite well in this game
Finishing off with the reserves then, uh, we have the replacement forwards, Fallo, Finga, Matt Gibbon, and Taniella Tupo, Ned Hannigan, whose name uh, I'm not familiar with, so looking forward to see him. And then finally, Pete Samu, another one in that back row, playing really well. Australia do have some good depth, to be fair, in their back rowers. Um, again, I think this is actually a nice looking team. I don't know a lot about Ned Hannigan, so I'll keep a special eye out for him in there. Uh, but this is a good set of replacement forwards. They all played very well, maybe apart from Taliella Tupo, actually. Uh, Taliella Tupo was not really been hitting the mark for me recently, so hopefully he gets a bit more into it um, in this Autumn Internationals. Replacement backs, then we've got Nick White, Noah Lolasio, and finally Jock Campbell going to be making his debut. So in terms of the bench makes up, um, I feel like I might be siding with that Australia have the stronger bench. I'm sure someone will disagree with me pretty much no matter what I said there. But I do think I'd probably move down the route of that Australia probably have the stronger bench for me here. Um, no one going for the 6-2. So says to me that maybe we'll get to see a bit of an open game. Hopefully the weather will be good and hopefully both teams keep their discipline under wraps, which is what it's really going to start to boil down to is going to be which team keeps their discipline. We saw Australia basically throwing away a game or two during that rugby championship through their own discipline, letting them down. Scotland arguably did the same thing during the Argentina tour. Uh, so who's going to keep their composure the best? So in terms of a score prediction, what do we think? I actually think this one might be really close. Um, I don't think it'll be a blowout either way so i'm gonna say you know what i think i'm gonna say australia to win but not by much i'm gonna say australia to win by two that's gonna be my prediction guys but as always i absolutely welcome you guys to drop down your predictions down in the comment section because i always enjoy having a bit of a read through them if you haven't already remember to sign up to the super brew it is live you can get involved with the predictor you've got two days now to go sign up put your teams in and what have you and if you want to get a jump on me doing my super brew why don't you do like other people have done and join the patreon if you get involved there with the tier three membership you guys can see my super brew predictions before they're locked in you want to change you want to one up me a little bit in terms of the super predictions you absolutely can get on there as well thank you to the existing patreons on there already i hope you've all enjoyed this one today guys i look forward to seeing you guys throughout the autumn internationals i'll see you all next time guys bye bye